What? It's your room. You get to decide. <sighs> so, imagine inventing a technology that allowed faster international travel, traveling via cars, boats, even by planes, by using a very simple, yet a very effective, effective and accurate detector system, being able to detect anything from explosives to drugs and foods. Well, now, what if I ask you to also make the same technology able to detect toxins in our foods, elements in our breaths? Does this sound impossible? Well, it's not. For the past millions of years, evolution has actually developed its own, its own type of technology that can do this. Using modern day technology and methods, we can learn to utilize our flying friends of bees and wasps to help us with more than just pollination. They can help us improve our day to day quality of life as well. Scientists are finding ways to use bees and wasps to detect explosives, illegal drugs, and even food poisoning. Well, these two scientists help up, have opened up a floodgate of research that allows us to find key signatures of chemical traces in animal weapons, in plant diseases, illegal drugs again, and even in cancer and buried bodies, according to a joint study of research by the University of Georgia and the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This all results in saving money, time, and our lives. Now, where it came from. Well, these are, it was originally created by Glenn Rains from the Georgia Univer University of Georgia from the Biological Engineering Department. And he also teamed up with, on the right-hand side, Joe Lewis, who is an entomologist, which is a zoologist who studies insects, from the U.S. Agriculture Department. How it works is they developed something called a wasp gun. Now, the wasp gun is a little cylind cylinder device that contains a fan, four to five wasps called Microphytes, which are actually unharmful to humans. All they do is attack parasites. And a webcam. Now, <coughs> if trained, these wasps are trained to smell a certain scent they can they recognize. They will crowd around the center of the wasp pound, which is in the middle of the glass tube it's in. And they'll start, and the webcam will start picking up their behaviors and taking up the board pictures for a second about what they're doing. It takes all this data and sends it back to a computer. Or their computer, this custom software, then analyzes these patterns created by the dark wasps against the contrast of the white cup, and it makes a graph representing the behaviors that they're doing. Now, this technology, they've actually found that they can hone in within 30 seconds of what the wasps picked up on. Now, many of you are probably wondering, how do you train bees and wasps? Okay, this is a picture of the wasps that are in the thing, and this is when they become activated and they start recognizing since they gather in the middle of it. Now, it the training of them takes actually a simulates Pavlov's dogs, <coughs> Pavlov's dogs operate conditioning, where you first you introduce the order to the bee or wasp and you pass it over them about three to four times. And once they recognize the scent, you then reward them with sugar water. So now once they associate the scent with sugar water, they're going to find the scents and then they're going to reward the sugar water. Now, the only downside about this is the bees can only learn one scent. But, on the other hand, these bees can take up to 30 minutes to teach, whereas using the sniffer dog takes about eight to nine months. Now, the payoff. Well, this research has actually um, caught the attention of the Pentagon. According to the New York Times, scientists working for the Pentagon have trained ordinary honeybees to ignore flowers and is to hone in on the scant traces of key chemicals and explosives and using a swarm type method. They'll literally swarm onto their targets. Now, instead of using the wasp pound and using those same conditions, the wasp, they, will, they will swarm onto the target within 99% of the time. That's how accurate they are. They were accurate more than 99% of the time. Now, the main difference between the wasp and bees is that the wasp can actually teach its friends to pick up and set. So you don't need to individually teach every single wasp or every single bee Think about it. They'll actually teach each other, and then they'll start teaching adjacent hives as well. So it could actually take within 30, a couple hours to teach two different hives to pick up on a certain scent. And these certain scents they can pick up on are it's called 2,4-DNT, which is the main key chemical trace in TNT and all the other explosive devices. The only main downside of this is that bees aren't able to use in a widespread area. It's kind of hard to track a bunch of hives and bees, and let's say the quad of school. But if you were using the classroom, they would swarm it right onto that clock, for example. Well, they're actually coming up with a solution to that. They're creating grain size tra radio transmitters that you can track the bees within the widespread areas. Now, many of us are wondering why would we need those and where would we need this at? Well, according to a, the National Defense Magazine in an interview held with Army Lieutenant General Michael Oates, 
In the war against improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, no weapon is as effective as a well-trained soldier in the bomb sniffing docks. However, according to the New York Times, with an interview held with Dr. Alan S. Rudolph, who is actually the program manager for the bee, it appears that bees are at least as sensitive, if not more sensitive, than dogs. Well, according to the general notes, 50% of the IEDs out in the battlefield are found. 50% of those explode. So, that never jumped up to 80%, though, once they started introducing dogs to the field. So, using bees would actually only increase our chances of more finding, finding the IEDs and preventing deaths from our soldiers. Now, Reigns, the one who originally developed this technology, says that these wasps were going to be used instead of dogs for explosive containers to the nation's seaports and our vehicles crossing border checkpoints, like at Mexico, when we were going back and forth to Canada or Mexico, and even our international travel airports, like LAX and JFK. Now, Professor Blanz, he originally developed this technology to find a chemical called 3 octanone It's a key sign of toxic fungus in our corn and potato crops. I'm sorry, corn and peanut crops. So that's going to save us money and actual health. They'll also be able to find illegal drugs using, which actually release more volatile odors, which are actually easier to find. So finding illegal drugs are actually a lot easier for these bees to find than what they've actually been developed for. They'll also be able to use for finding dead bodies for helping solve crimes, and they can also detect ulcers and cancers in our breath that relate to our health. So in the end, what we learned about today is that bees and wasps are able to be trained to help our day-to-day -day lives. We learned that we can use them for military purposes and even our every day-to-day -day lives, using food poisoning or even our health. What this all means is that we can save money, can save us time, and then most importantly, to save lives. Dominic, you here? Yes. What did you think? Um, well, I thought um, he previewed his points well in the beginning. Uh, kind of like laid out what he was going to talk about. Um, I was kind of iffy on what attention device he used. Uh, it sounded like he just, he kind of, I would guess it was it's, it's kind of like a statement. It was kind of like a statement, but he put it in his own way. Um, I thought he cited the sources really well. Uh, told us who the people were. Um, the visual aids, I feel like they helped um, prove his points. Uh, they connected well with what he was talking about uh, as far as the PowerPoint went. Um, I like his transitions and his signposts. It was easy, it went smoothly. Um, so the facts that he gave and his explanations regarding the facts were, they were really thorough. Uh, I saw that he did his research. Um, made it more clear for me to help, to help me understand, made it more clear for me. And then um, I'll say his conclusion. Uh, it was it was well it was, it was well thought out. It was smooth. Um, his exit line. He had an exit line, and he kind of like reviewed and summarized the points that he stated in his speech. So overall, I, I liked it. Thank you, sir. All right. <laughs> well, I'd agree with a lot of those comments. I I didn't pick out a preview at the beginning of the speech, but I could follow the body of the speech because it's basically organized by a series of questions. So that was the one thing that I thought was a little weak. Uh, Dominic heard something that I didn't hear, but I, in the body of the speech, I thought everything was pretty well laid out. I just didn't think it was as clear at the beginning as it needed to be. Um, the attention device, the visualization's okay. I think there's got to be something maybe that would even work better, but kind of this rhetorical question sort of thing, visualization that you've got is, is okay. I thought the topic was very clearly identified, and uh, you laid out the goal nicely, and there's a nice justification throughout the speech for the subject that you're talking about. I do think you've got a lot of supporting material. You're not always consistent about citing that supporting material. I, it's it's clear that you've done research, and most of the time I, I heard a, a reference to uh, an expert that you're quoting. For instance, you got the general at one point. There are some statistics that get presented. I think that's associated with the scientist that you show their picture of, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, but it wasn't always consistent on those sorts of things. On the visuals, probably you could skip the picture of the scientist.